in an ideal world, we would have seven generations under our belt. Hello, my name is John Rose. Life used to be really simple, my friends. It's really complicated now because we no longer have seven generations under our belt. We don't live in an ideal world anymore. We're damaged. We're damaged individually and collectively, and as a result, the environment's damaged, our society is damaged. And now people use that as an excuse to somehow prove that we don't have a species-specific diet. Oh, look, John, you can't feed seven billion people with our species-specific diet, therefore it must not be our species-specific diet. Wrong! We're damaged! Supply and demand! If only a few of us are living the right way, how can we expect to see that everywhere? We can't! Guarantee you! As that demand goes up, the supply will follow. So you can't use lame excuses based on the conditions we have because we're damaged. You can't blame the mistakes we've made and the condition we've got from that as an excuse to ignore the fact that we have a species-specific diet. Oh, but John, you can't go out in nature and, and, and find our food growing everywhere because we don't have seven generations under our belt. You can't be thrown into an environment that doesn't have seven generations under our belt and then use that as an excuse that we're not supposed to live a certain way. It shows a lack of thought or just deceit on some people's part to try to confuse everybody. Yes, even if we are put into the tropics right now, we probably couldn't survive. Why? Because we don't have seven generations under our belt. If we were living in an ideal world, we would have seven generations behind us that are planning for what we got right now. And this reminds me of a documentary I saw back in the early 1900s. Didn't realize it was a piece of propaganda as I do now. And I hate to say it, but I, got, I bought into all that stuff. Because the urge to save humanity is almost always a false face as an urge to rule it. H.L. Mencken. In other words, every time we, there's something that needs to be done in our sick society, in our, in our polluted environment, the sickest of the sickest of us organize that. And they infiltrate, they find one way to use that to keep us under control. They did it with the civil rights movement. They did it with uh, women's rights. They're doing it now with the environment. So this documentary I saw was put out by PBS. It was about a pre-Columbian civilization. And it was an interesting documentary. I really enjoyed it. In fact, I taped it way long, long time ago, and I found it not too long ago by looking on YouTube. I found it on YouTube. It was put out by PBS. And it was right around the same time these 1,680 scientists came out and gave a warning to humanity because of our environment. And the rules of the world took all of that and they took one thing out of it and are using it against us. And the environment's a big issue. I'm a huge environmentalist. And I love what the mad cowboy said, Howard Lyman, to call yourself an environmentalist and still eat meat is like calling yourself a philanthropist and not giving to charity paraphrase somewhat, it might be close enough to, to use. And again, as, as a passionate man trying to help people live a better life, not eat the animals, I look for everything I can to help tell my message. And I jumped on board with those 1,680 scientists telling us about how we're doomed if we keep doing what we're doing. And that's true, we can't keep doing what we're doing to the environment. And the documentary came out with these pre-Columbian people who are isolated from the world. Every now and then some of the white men go up there and interview them, I guess. And it was translated, so who knows what the real words were, but I'm sure the language they were speaking probably, well, if they were able to translate it, then it, I'm sure someone else was able to as to whether or not it was authentic. But I, I'm vulnerable, so I had to believe what they are saying. But the message of this documentary, this pre-Columbian civilization, said, we're the big brothers, we're on top of the world. 
We see you younger brothers down there and you're messing up because there's a cycle. What happens, you know, the way water evaporates and rains and forms the snow on the clouds and then the snow melts and it comes down. It's a big cycle, but it comes around, it goes around. And what they're noticing up there, they say, look, look around, see these bushes? They used to be everywhere, not anymore because of what you guys are doing down there. You're raping the planet. You're taking things out of the planet they are finite. But most importantly, you're also polluting it. But this is where they're getting us on how we're being polluted. This is the twist that they're using to control us. Now, to finish the story about the, the pre-Columbian civilization, what I thought was interesting is that, that that's what, exactly what they said. They said, look, what we do every day is we nurture what we got going here, and we have it, we have it planned for seven generations. And, and I'm going to digress a little bit and tell a little bit more about the story because it was interesting. They talked about taking, isolating one little baby that was selected purposely, uh, that's supposed to be from the smartest parents or whatever, and they put him in this cave, and I guess it couldn't be pitch dark, but it, that's somehow my recollection of it. But that can't be true because the kid would be blind by the time he came out. But the point is that he was isolated in this cave, and the elders came in and taught that little child. Every day they came in and taught that child how to take care of everything for seven generations. And that's where that little child spent the first seven years of his life. Now think about this. You never get to see anything they're telling you about, but you got all these brilliant old guys coming in to you and saying, look, this is what we got to do to make sure this happens and this happens and this happens. And you can see the little child never seeing this, picturing all that stuff in his mind. And of course, this is what I was going through when I watched this. And I thought to myself, wow, how exciting would that be to, to be brought up the first seven years of life like that and then be exposed to everything you were told about and you see it finally. You're going, yeah, you got to do this because there's the, there the ants, and you see the ants, and it's like, oh, my God, this is cool. Of course, that would be quite an experience to be isolated like that for seven years, but interesting that they planned ahead for those seven generations. So what I used to do in the early beginnings of my message is I really added that as a big part of my selling point. <clears throat> we got to change. Look what we're doing to the environment. The world's experts say we only have a few more decades left before we've gone too far. And then the way they get us is to, is to attack the wrong thing in the environment and claim it's all the problem. When it's not the problem, this is where they're getting us. And the reason why they chose it is they can assign it to everybody and tax everybody. I heard a, a number yesterday, and I don't know if it's accurate or not, but supposedly in one decade or every decade we're supposed to generate 100 trillion dollars globally for global carbon taxes. Bullshit! It isn't carbon we should be concerned about. This is bullshit. We don't solve problems with taxes. As Chief Justice John Marshall said, the power to tax is the power to destroy. It's all about keeping us poor. You add carbon taxes to everything, now everything costs more, and that keeps us poor. Remember, the people who rule the world have so much money, it's not even funny. And it's not about them making more money, it's making sure we don't make any money. That's why half the planet, there, there is no middle class in these third world countries. There is no middle class. A billion people make a dollar a day, and two billion make two dollars a day. There is no middle class. The other half, we have a middle class, but the people who control us know every century we got to call and kill those people. Last century they did it to 262 million people during peacetime by the government. They were the upper middle class. That's what the rulers have to do. They got to keep us poor. They got to control the middle class because that's the threat to them. They want as many people poor as they can. They want to create a form of neo-feudalism. And they're going to do it with something bullshit like this man-made global warming carbon tax. It goes back to the Hegelian problem reaction solution. They create a problem. In this case, it's a global problem. And we're going to react on, oh my God, the polar bears are going to be dying. We got more polar bears now than ever. All the predictions Al Gore claimed were going to happen aren't happening because he flipped the graphs. He didn't. He had 
carbon dioxide precede global warming. It's the other way around. He flipped the graphs so that he could trick us and think that carbon dioxide is the problem. It's not the problem. It's all the other crap we're doing to the environment that's the problem, not the carbon dioxide. They chose that because now they can assign it to everybody. I'm breathing out carbon dioxide. I'm going to tax you. Those damn cows are farting. I can tax the cows. Vegans, yippee. Now we can get you guys to not eat the meat. You see how they, how they got you sucked into that? I fell for it also. Don't fall for this. That's not the problem we have to worry about. And it isn't our fault that's causing these circumstances. We are killing the environment. It's no longer sustainable. Yeah, half the rainforest, this is what I used to say a long time ago, half the rainforest are gone. These are the lungs of the planet. And why are they gone? Because they had to tear down the, the fields to grow soy to feed the cattle so they could ship up the meat up to McDonald's. So, yes, we're, we're screwing up the environment, but don't get tricked into this carbon tax bullshit because that's the reaction, or that's the solution. Problem, reaction, solution. What's the problem? It's global. What's the reaction? Fear, save us. What's the solution? Carbon taxes. That's not a solution. They're not going to use any of that money for carbon taxes to do away with any of the systems right now that are causing the problems. We've got to do away with all those systems. I made videos on this before. We're making two energy mistakes. Don't make the first energy mistake of cooking your food. We won't make the second energy mistake of using fossil fuels for energy. So the carbon taxes aren't going to do away with all the fossil fuels and come up with any good, renewable, usable energy. We already have the solution for that. The carbon tax is a ruse. It's a, it's the, it's a distraction. It's to keep you poor. Don't get tricked into this. I did several videos of this. And man, I got attacked by a lot of vegans that don't know their ass from a hole of ground or the colon from a garden hose when it comes to understanding how the people who rule the world trick us and fool us. And that's what I'm trying to help you guys realize. Is that, that the urge to save humanity is always a false face for the urge to rule it. So everything that needs to be done is always going to be infiltrated by these bad guys or they're, they're going to take something from that and screw us with it. And in this case, it's blaming the, the climate changes on man. Now, I'm not saying we're not affecting a lot of things in the environment that we got to stop doing. But the solution they offer is bullshit, and that's the problem. Now, that's the key. Problem, reaction, solution. Their solution is always to control us. Now, it's global carbon taxes at the tune of $100 trillion a decade. That means everything you buy is going to be more, more expensive. Stand, again, this is, and they want you to think that you're a bad person, you shouldn't even breathe, now you got to live in this little 200 square foot apartment. I'm telling you folks, you have to really study these people to understand what's going on. And then realize we don't live in an ideal world. Individually and collectively we're damaged. Society's damaged, there's a lot of things wrong with society. We've got the worst of the worst of us taking advantage of us. They're opportunists. They look for sickness and they infest it and they make it worse. That's, that's, that's a reflection of us. We're a sick species. Now the worst of us take advantage of us. There are opportunists who take advantage of these situations we created and then they use that to control us. So when it comes to understanding all this, my friends, keep in mind we don't live in an ideal world anymore. The environment has been damaged and we've got to stop doing that, but we're never going to be able to accomplish that with any of the systems we have right now. There isn't one governmental system out here that's going to solve that problem. There isn't any one of these supposedly independent think tanks or whatever, nonprofit organizations that are going to solve our problems. This is a bottom-up solution. We've got to realize the role we play when it comes to either getting us out of this hole or keeping us where we are. Individually, we got to become better than what we are. We got to stop expecting any system to solve our problems. The power to tax is the power to destroy. Global carbon taxes is not the problem. Is not the answer. Again, we're damaged. Individually, we're damaged. Collectively, we're damaged. We should have seven generations under our belt, and we don't. And what you're going to have are people trying to confuse everybody and saying, "Look." If this was a species-specific diet, why isn't it growing everywhere? Because we're not eating it. If all of us were doing it, it would be growing everywhere. And remember, it's going to take seven generations to be able to get back to where we were before the fall of mankind. So that's what we're up against right now. If we wake up and reach the tipping point, it's going to take seven generations to finally get to a point where 
you can't use the excuse, well, it doesn't grow everywhere. You can't go in out in nature and get the food you're supposed to eat because it isn't there. Well, of course it's not there. We're not there. You use that as an excuse, it just makes, it makes me realize you're not using your brain at all. Or you're just part of the evil side that wants to confuse everyone. So I rambled on quite a bit. I actually combined several topics I was thinking of in this one video. I was wanting to do them separate. So, uh, thinking if I should uh, do two more right after this and try to do it again and keep it separate. Anyway, whichever way I go, it's important to realize that we play a role. And I am starting to drip sweat right now. It's getting warmer out here. 100 degree temperature and there's no wind at all right now. So I'm actually dripping from my elbows. Can you see me glistening? Anyway, we play a role. You gotta get excited. Why? Because when you do all of this, it's fun. And you can go around and tell everybody, do it because it's a treat. <laughs>